Hi, and welcome back to this last video for Unit 5, discussing the differences in intelligence. Now that we know what intelligence is, we can discuss the differences between intelligence. So your learning targets for today are to explain what is average intelligence. We'll then talk about and create a chart for the four types of intellectual disabilities, their characteristics, and different causes. And then we will actually analyze the giftedness and whether or not it means just being very smart and how it is linked to creativity as well so let's go ahead and begin by design the average IQ score is 100 that is what is considered average intelligence on an IQ test about half of the people in the United States have IQ scores from 90 to 110 that is considered low average and high average intelligence tests help identify the people who are out of the ordinary and so the people who are below 70 and above 130 are identified as intellectually disabled and gifted because the education system that you're in best suits people with average intelligence the people who are intellectually disabled would find it too difficult the people who are gifted would find it too easy 95 percent of people get scores between 70 and 130 people with scores of 70 or below are defined as having intellectual disabilities and people with scores of 130 or above are regarded as gifted and in both cases special help is needed let's take a look at this chart and this distribution of IQ scores it is a bell shaped graph so it's a normal distribution on this chart many traits including intelligence are distributed along this normal curve most of the people as you can see 50 percent are within the 90 to 110 range 95 percent are within the 70 to 130 range but then it is the last five percent that is split up between the um, intellectually disabled and the gifted 5 to 10, and I want to make sure to point this out, the average IQ score is transformed to be 100 compared to everybody else. If we took the scores of people today in the 21st century and compared them to scores 100 years ago, um, along a real um, comparison, the scores 100 years ago would be about 40 if our scores today were 100. Our scores uptick 5 to 10 uh, points every 10 years so we are becoming smarter as human beings but still our average score is meant to be 100 the technical definition of intellectually disabled is an IQ at or below 70 now this used to be in the DSM 4 revised and before that and your textbook is even old enough to refer to this as mental retardation that term is no longer accepted and as of May 2013 with the release of the DSM 5 and that's the book of psychiatric diagnoses the term has been updated to intellectual disability so as to no longer be offensive and there are di there are several different levels there's four different levels of intellectual disabilities there's mild about 80 percent of the people who of that two and a half percent who qualify as intellectually disabled have IQs ranging from 50 to 70 and these are the people who are just a little slow for lack of a better term they have um, difficulty learning to walk talk and feed themselves but eventually they can do it and as adults they are able to take care of themselves maybe live on their own with um, outside assistance from time to time and hold jobs for themselves so that is mildly disabled moderately disabled is from 35 to 49 IQ scores and these people can learn to speak dress themselves and work under supportive conditions and these are the children with uh, Down syndrome and adults with Down syndrome are more than likely classified at the moderately disabled level. Then we have the severely disabled level, which is 20 to 34, and these people need constant supervision and they can perform routines that it takes them a long time to learn if they're repetitive, but they need to be focused and continued in a protective environment. And then there are the profoundly 
disabled who have an IQ at 20 or below, they are dependent on other, they are dependent on other people for care throughout their entire lives. Giftedness is the other end of the spectrum, and it means to have an IQ score of 130 or above. And the definition of gifted is to possess outstanding talent or to show the potential for performing at a remarkably high level of accomplishment. And that is compared to other people of the same age. And gifted children, if they are identified as such, are sometimes called prodigies. And these prodigies can develop a particular talent in their childhood. And here are some examples. Um, in the visual arts, we have Bernini. In Mozart, in music, obviously, was a child prodigy if he gave his first composition at eight, the age of five. Um, the Williams sisters in sports were very, very good world-ranked tennis players in their teens. And in math, at Ruth, uh, Ruth Lawrence has earned multiple math degrees uh, bes before the time she was 18. And then finally, we have creativity. And creativity is often linked with giftedness, but it doesn't always have to go together. And being creative is the ability to invent new solutions to problems or to create new or ingenious methods or materials. So a person can be highly creative without being gifted, but they're often linked together. And high intelligence does not always necessarily guarantee high creativity. And so let's review our learning targets. We have average intelligence. We have talked about what is considered average intelligence, and that is the IQ score of 100. And a normal distribution is a bell curve on a graph. We talked about mild, moderate, severe, and profound intellectual disabilities. And we analyzed the terms of gifted, prodigy, and creativity. And that is the end of this unit. Be prepared for your quiz and the unit exam coming up. And 